Now here's an up-and-coming young player. The name is Ruth. As a pitcher and outfielder, Ruth helped lead the Red Sox to three World Series titles in six years, making him a valuable star, and he was sold to the Yankees. After the sale of Ruth to New York, Boston couldn't win a championship, and many dubbed this game-changing sale as the curse of the Bambino. This brings up Harry Walker, a timely hitter during the series. Slaughter is off with the pitch. Walker swings and lines a double to left center. Slaughter kept on going, rounding third base at full speed, scoring all the way from first, when the relay throw from Johnny Pesky reached home too late for a play on Slaughter. This imp... Rakeen eyes the batter carefully. There goes a screwball pitch. McBride grounds to Shane Beast, and Higgins is forced out at second to end the ball game, with the St. Louis Cardinals winning the seventh and final game of the 1946 World Series by a score of four to three. In Boston, they call 1967 the impossible dream season. The year before, the Red Sox had finished ninth in a 10-team league, 26 games out of first. Then came the summer of Carl Yastrzemski. Yaz won the Triple Crown and delivered countless late-inning heroics. The Sox wound up winning the pennant on the last day of the season. Now, one out from victory, Gibson makes a supreme effort, and Scott strikes out. The Cardinals win. They're the new world champion. Deep center field, way back, way back. We're tied up. Right field, deep, Evans is going back, back near the wall, and oh, what a catch he made! What a catch by Dwight Evans, and it's a double play. I tell you, one of the more dramatic home runs in World Series history. So there will be a seventh game here tomorrow night. Top of the ninth inning, he put the Reds ahead. With a high fly ball. It should be all over. Geronimo's under. And Cincinnati has won the World Championship, beating the Boston Red Sox 4-3. Hit high in the air to left field. Going to the corner, Yastrzemski. It's over the wall. It's a home run for Bucky Bench. Yankees get the lead 3-2, and it just clears the Now the Yankee dugout, who has been very quiet up till right now, they are out in fourth. The great Bucky Dent. To left field, and deep and down he goes back, and it's gone! Unbelievable! Looking at one for the ages here. And two strikes. And out of there. In the bottom of the top of the ninth inning. Oh. That second only to Fisk. In the minds of everybody in New England. Line into left field, base hit for Carter, and the Mets are still alive. And that's going to be hit to center, base hit. And that's going to be hit into center field, base hit. Here comes Carter to score, and the time runners are The Mets refuse to go quietly. With two out, they come scrambling back with consecutive hits. And John McNamara goes to the mound. He wants Bob Stanley to pitch to Mookie and Wilson. Behind the bag, it gets through Buckner. Here comes Knight, and the Mets win it. With four strikeouts. Got him. 
in the eighth inning, leading by three as Boone hits it to deep left. That might send the Yankees to the World Series. Boone, a hero in game seven. <laughs> Sox team doctor Bill Morgan basically tied Kurt Schilling's tendon down to the bone to make it stable. And Schill took the mound in game six, blood seeping into his sock from the surgery. But like a scene from the natural, Schilling climbs the mound and prepares to take on this Yankee lineup. Sinnings, a feeble swing by Sierra. He strikes out for the third time, and game six goes to the eighth. This would be... The fifth pennant for the Red Sox since that 1918 season. Here it is. Ground ball to second. Reese. The Boston Red Sox have won the pennant. The Boston Red Sox earned this celebration here at Yankee Stadium with the biggest comeback. Postseason baseball history. Back to full. Red Sox fans have longed to hear it. The Boston Red Sox are world champions. <laughs>